Hi, this is Dr. Paul and thank you so much for watching this video by Waterfront Dentistry by Pauls. Today I'd like to talk to you about complications that arise uh, during implant procedures, whether it be during the placement uh, sequence or during the implant supported crown insertion uh, sequences uh, or timelines. So let's talk about uh, uh, you know what what we need when we try to place an implant surgically uh, to have the success rate be as high as possible. So a couple of factors. The first factor being uh, medical health. So if the patient is healthy, uh, they're not taking IV bisphosphonates, which is you know medications used for osteoporosis. Um, you know if the patient is not a smoker. And what do we define as a smoker? Well, anyone smoking more than ten cigarettes a day is what we consider. Uh, you know, a smoker and smokers have a higher failure rate with implants. Uh, we almost say 25%, which means, uh, you know, out of 100 people, 25 people may have some kind of uh, um, uh, implant related complications or failures. Uh, so that is on the higher end. Uh, but again, with, with patient management or telling a patient what to expect uh, and giving them their risk factors it's very important to realize that smokers are always given the option that you know you can get implants, but the chances of you having failures is higher. Um, now, of course, the third one is uncontrolled diabetes, where people, their HbA1c's are very erratic. Uh, and this is another kind of situation where we, we tell the patient that, you know, you really need to get your diabetes under control before getting implants. So these are the, the situations uh, going in, we tell the patient right off the bat that your implants or you will have probably some implant complications. So just hope for the best. Now, that being said, all of these factors have or can be uh, treated to some extent. And that's where having a good medical checkup, a good uh, you know, uh, outlook towards uh, treatment comes into play. Uh, the, the, the second, I guess, prosthetic failures of implants results when an implant is placed and the implant also integrates, but it's placed in the wrong angulation or the wrong depth. So what I mean by this is if, if an implant is placed, um, you know, either too uh, curved or too uh, leaning in front behind or to the sides or, uh, you know, not having enough of bone around the implant or flat out just being too shallow or too deep, all of these come along with their own set of, uh, you know, failure uh, issues or uh, a possible uh, outcome problems. So now that being said, it's very important to realize that, uh, you know, with implants, there's always a way you can redo it. So unlike a tooth, once you lose a tooth, the tooth has to be pulled out. An implant could be pulled out or could be de detorqued uh, and within three to six months, that area will fill up with blood or if it doesn't, certain things can be done and an implant can be reinserted. So there's always a do over with implants. Um, now, that being said, you know, we always try to avoid complications or we always try to avoid failures. Uh, and the single biggest thing is trying to figure out or trying to uh, you know, place the implants by knowing where the restoration is going to go right from uh, the beginning of the treatment modality. So what do I mean by this? So, uh, you know, when we are replacing one tooth, uh, as long as the bite is good, we don't worry about, you know, implant placing, uh, you know, as much uh, uh, compared to when you're uh, re restoring or replacing a bunch of teeth uh, and if the patient or the person has something called a crossbite or a malalignment, then we always try to work from the result backwards. So what we do now in modern dentistry is we take a scan of the, uh, the person's teeth, we take a cone beam CT of the person's teeth, we stitch it in a computer vector, we design the prosthesis or the, the final product, and then we have the implants placed in the, in the best area to house the result uh, rather than placing the implants and then telling the restoring dentist or rather than placing the implants and then figuring out where am I going to put the crowns or the bunch of crowns, we actually figure out where the, the crowns or the bunch of crowns are going to go and work backwards to now putting the implants to hold on to the final outcome of the final product. Um, I hope this has made sense. Now, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me and we can definitely try to help you. Thank you so much for watching.